Makes you think that I'm an answer if you ain't mine. Even if you call me up hey. Hey. Y'all know what's going on. Hey, if you a real ninja, hit the subscribe button. All my real ninjas hitting the like button too. Y'all know what y'all know what it is. Go ahead and hit the dance real quick. Take this damn mask off. <sighs> Woo! Yes, sir. Welcome back to another niggas and nerds news segment of the show. I understand everybody can't use the N-word, so that's why ninjas is available to you. But I understand. I know your secret. You secretly use it on the low. It's all good. As long as you ain't using that ER. Let's get into the news for today. Guys, hit the like button, the red subscribe button. If you're enjoying the content, we're on the road to 5,000 subscribers. We're on Rumble now. So if you are a Rumble person more than you are a YouTube person, go ahead and uh, same handle Atreus, all of that. Anyway, let's get into the news. So, Amazon Studios executive admits company is still being intentionally deaf about fan feedback for the Lord of the Rings to raise the power. Hello! You wanna know why? Because they're garbage. Complete garbage. Alright. Uh, Amazon Studios executive Vernon Sanders, who is the head of global television, recently admitted that the company is still completely ignoring fan feedback surrounding the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. Uh, shout out to Bounding in the comics, by the way. Uh, y'all gotta stop y'all sight from, like, skipping all over the place while I'm reading. That should be driving me crazy. Sanders first admitted that the company conducted their own study to try and determine how people reacted to the show. He, he relayed, we set up our own study with thousands of people, among them thousands of Lord of the Rings fans, to really have a conversation with them as each episode dropped to just understand how they're reacting. Nine times out of ten, they ain't, they ain't invite no YouTubers out there. The YouTubers the ones that's the driving force behind them, speaking what the fan base really thinks. A, a, a bunch of random people off the streets ain't gonna give you... Because the thing about it is, a lot of people don't think deeply about this stuff, but they are, they do have certain triggers, right? So when you intentionally put, like, nigga elves in there, it's like some people who aren't deep into it, they're like... Where did these nigga elves come from? So, I mean, you know, anyway, we were doing as much of a 360 comprehensive look to really understand it. And I think we got a lot of those Lord of the Rings fans, uh, both fans of the books and fans of the movies. We also know that there were some fans who had issues or didn't feel like this was what they were expecting or done in the way that they expected. And that's natural. I think whenever you take on something so beloved, you're going to have probably a strong reaction for and have some people who just aren't on board. Agreed. Uh, he didn't go into any details, but Amazon Studios and Prime Video embarrassed themselves when they claimed to have brought a number of Lord of the Rings super fans to special screenings of the show's trailer in uh, Malika. Is that how you say that? Yeah, I mean, because I think, <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw those uh super fans but they were obviously not fans they were all paid um morons oh there's the video right there and we might we might play it these super fans didn't seem at all interested in the lord of the rings when they cut a number of promotional videos attempting to promote the show rather than rather they fo put their focus on identity politics politics instead right so uh wait one super fan stated when asked to describe the trailer, I also want to say representative because we're getting like more diversity within the series. Like we're seeing our first black elf. <laughs> we're seeing the first female dwarf. I'm very looking forward to looking at that. I guarantee you she didn't watch the show. Where is it? Where did it go? Let me see. I'm just going to play a clip of it. If, if bounding in the comments will stop skipping all over the place. Every time I was like, okay, take a breath, something new would happen. And it was, <gasps> it's made a word for never peace, right? If, like, Sauron is hot, I feel like people would be like, I can fix him. <laughs> Middle Earth had, like, a club. <laughs> no, this tune is banging. Starstroke, mystified and scattered. Wow. Well, okay. So I think you can. And <laughs> notice no, no straight white man up there. <laughs> oh, man, it sucks to be a straight white man right now. Oh, uh, <laughs> Not only were their so-called superfans pushing identity politics rather than discussing Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings, one of them later admitted to not even watching the show. I didn't even know that. 
YouTuber Ryan Cannell discovered that Chanel Williams, one of the so-called superfans, did a video where she revealed she hadn't even watched the show. She claimed she was going to binge it once the season ended, but also revealed she was watching House of the Dragon weekly. <laughs> Shout out to the RKL post, man, Ryan Cannell. So if the people Amazon used to uh, perform their study or anything like their so-called superfans, they flew into... Um, Mallorca to watch the trailer their study is probably heavily skewed and some of them might not have even watched the show altogether um however there wasn't even the that wasn't even the biggest reveal that Sanders made what the hell does Michael B. Jordan got going on here man what's up with you and not getting haircuts come on my boy what are we doing and what's up with this tight ass shirt man what is going on did 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 Lori Harvey do this much damage to you? Like, what is going on, son? You need to go and get that taken care of. <laughs> you look like you covered your mouth in super glue and went down on some really hairy George of the Jungle slash Jane of the Jungle ass girl and came up with the rest of the pubes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Let, let me let me get back on task. He actually uh, briefly discussed. The Charlie Vickers Hall brand being revealed as Sauron in the final episode. While discussing Sauron, Sanders made it clear Amazon Studios and Prime Video are not listening to actual fans of uh, Tolkien and The Lord of the Rings who have made it abundantly clear the show is terrible, mainly due to the fact that it completely threw Tolkien's writing into the waste bin in favor of modern, woke sensibilities. Sanders said, one of the challenges for this show when you are adapting something is to tell the story that the people are excited to see. Oh my God, that is so, that is so important. Highlight that, excited to see, but sometimes find ways to surprise them. So that's the tricky. Remember what I talked about in the last video about there's a difference between telling your own original story where people have no idea what the overall narrative is. None of these characters are. That is a privilege for people to see, okay? When I tell my story about the book that I'm writing, it's going to be a privilege for people to get to know these characters if it's good. But when you're telling a story that has an already established IP, already established narrative, characters, settings, and you, people are excited to see that play out in, in, in live action. They're not excited to see your version of what the hell you want to tell. That's not what people want to see. All right. Uh, and, and then the challenge is to find ways to subvert their expectations in a way that people like not change the sexuality of a person just because you can not put nigga elves in there for no reason whatsoever uh yeah so sauron i would argue the greatest villain of all time hmm, i don't know thanos and who else what y'all put in the comments what are some of the greatest movie cartoon just villains of all time thanos you got to put in there dr doom you got to put it a joker you got to put in there who else um what about uh the thing from the the mind flare from stranger things what about um um i don't know well anyway sauron okay so no, i'm getting off task uh what are the layers here i think because of the way the story was told because of the great performances of charlie Vic vickers and more for clark cap i think audiences now have an insight whether he fooled them or whether they knew it the entire time there's a much more interpersonal human side of the character and i'm so excited for the people to see sauron unleashed in, unleashed in season two uh literally everybody knew that he was sauron <laughs> except the show butchers the character of uh, sauron they don't they don't show his actual fall his chance of repentance uh penance and obedience his rejection of it and then his complete turning into the reincarnation of evil tolkien laid out sauron's character art in letter 131 to milton uh waldman writing in the some, yeah whatever uh we're gonna skip that <laughs> and this is a long ass article Tolkien continued uh oh no 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 we, we don't want to read from Tolkien right now we want to know what this executive is that all the executive said I think it is it, I could find out if um okay shout out to Mountain into comics but we only wanted to see what the executive said uh yeah so they butchered Sauron I mean, they butchered the entire show. It's garbage, all right? Complete garbage. So, season two, I'm excited to make fun of. But anyway, uh, I'll talk to you guys a little bit later. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. 
The show is garbage. Cancel it. Let's go. Let's go. That thing down like you started a tantrum, my baby. You had some plans with your man, just tell him to cancel, my baby. Slide to the like Dracula's mansion, my baby. When you pull up, it's on action, my baby.